What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Detroit Love, with P-Dubs, Rastaja, and Michael B. with the video debut of the Super Game Room Dudes video. Let's get it started. Sega! <laughs> <laughs> What's up? What's up? What's up? What's hey, up, everybody. everybody. How you doing? How you doing, guys? And this is Patrick, a.k.a. P-Dubs, and with me, as always, is my good friend, Carl Detroit Love. How are you, Carl? Fantastic. You know how to do it. And we got our Canadian brothers from the north. We got Mike. Mike will be the game genie. What's up, Michael? Hey, everybody. You... <laughs> Hey, everybody. <laughs> and then we got Rostalgia in the house as well. Rostalgia, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Doing well, doing well. And guys, the new era begins. That's right. You are watching the debut episode of Super Game Room Dudes and the Four Horsemen of RK Gaming. Super excited. Woo! For this podcast episode. And I uh, hope you guys are excited as well. On this particular episode, we're going to be talking about Sega, baby. Nothing but Sega, which gets me excited because I was on Team Sega growing up. Make sure in the chat you let us know, are you Team Nintendo, Team Sega, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, to kick it off, Rostalgia, what do you think we should talk about first in regards to Sega? What do you got for us? Well, I think based off of what we kind of teased in the thumbnail, I think the thing that makes the most amount of sense is the new Sega announcement for the Astro City Mini that they're going to be releasing in Japan. Um, I think that'd probably be a good uh, starting off point. Yeah, fire. Yeah, fire away. What do you guys think about this? I know I posted a quick six minute video on my YouTube channel, which, by the way, guys, speaking of which, before we get to the before we get to the good stuff, uh, it's kind of exciting. We are broadcasting live on all four YouTube channels at the same time, as well as my Facebook fan page. So guess what, guys, whatever chat room you're in, don't worry, whatever chats you type in, we will see them on our end and we'll try to show as many chats as we possibly can from everyone watching in all the different chat rooms. Uh, so uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, get this started. Um, so uh, Astro City Mini got announced, and uh, I got to find my button here. Go ahead and tell us what did, what did we learn so so far about it, uh, Stephen? Uh, well, we've uh, we've learned it's going to be a Japan release for now. Uh, we haven't really gotten any information about whether or not we're going to see something similar to it uh, in stateside or in North America. And I'd imagine that if they were planning to do something like that, I don't think they'd kind of go with this aesthetic appeal or this aesthetic style. Um, it's not really something that many people in North America here are very familiar with. That's that's a style of cabinet that we would have seen very heavily in Japan and still continue to see uh, in Japan there. So. Um, other than that, we know that uh, it's going to come with 36 games, and I believe we only know 10 of those games. Uh, but the list they provided is actually pretty interesting. And I think the other feature there that I was personally excited about was HDMI out, uh, which sounds really silly, but I actually do like having that there because you can do a whole lot with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Able to capture your screen. Uh... Uh, put it on a TV, stream your gameplay, all that kind of stuff. I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this game list, Michael B? You've made a few like top 10 Sega games. Uh, did any of these games make your list in your prior videos? Nope. <laughs> None of them? <laughs> None of those. No. None of those? <laughs> well, I, I really like Altered Beast and uh, Golden Axe, Golden Axe and Revenge of Death Adder. Um, Columns to me. I don't see that. I don't think of that when I think of arcade. But then again, I'm not the kind of person who thinks Tetris is a good arcade game. So maybe that's just personal choice. Virtual Fighter, of course. Fantasy Zone, definitely a good arcade game. I mean, this is a very early list. We're going to get a lot more games. And some of Sega's biggest actual arcade hits aren't actually on here yet. So mm -hmm. interested to see what other games will be included. Yeah. And I actually think what they're going to do here is the same thing they did with the Sega Genesis Mini. So I don't know if you guys remember how they were releasing information, but they were essentially like every single month they would batch release X number of titles. So I think it was 10 games at a time. And then one of the last releases, they said, hey, here's 10 plus two more. And then we got our total list. I think they're going to do the same thing. I mean, there's 36 games. They've got the whole rest of the year to kind of play with us and to figure out all their licensing if they need to do any of that. And uh, I'm I'm very excited to see because you're absolutely right. Their their main 
some of their top games are not in this list. They have a couple in here that are pretty good, but uh, there's definitely a lot of room to improve. So I'm uh, I'm personally excited. I picked one up myself. What about you, Carl? What are your thoughts on this? Hey, I was a big Sega man, but uh, I mainly played the sports. When when Sega was fighting against Nintendo with the whole Nintendo don't, you know, campaign, <laughs> it, it was it was all about the sports, and and I ate it up. I was playing Joe Montana football. That was my favorite. We played the NHL hockey. My sons were, you know, were just babies then, but uh, you, you, the hockey was just awesome to play. You know, Steve Eiserman, uh Detroit Red, Red Wings was hot. You know, so. To be able to score, have that little light come on, and I mean, it was just, you know, just thinking about that, which is a cool time. Me and my neighbor, my next door neighbor, had it, and uh, we would we would play each other. I had Nintendo, he had Sega initially, and we would just go back and forth from each other's house playing for hours and hours after working all day. Um, but this list here, this list, you know, similar to the the the, the Genesis Mini that I picked up. You know, they just they just didn't add any games that appealed to me. This this short list here, uh, my my wife loves Golden Axe. She would she would play that all day with mm-hmm. just that. Uh, Virtual Fighter, we used to play that. It, it's, it's a it's, I, th- I think it sucks. I mean, the graphics. <laughs> you know, for He's the time, <laughs> Virtual Fighter sucks. <laughs> yeah, for, for the time, it was sweet to be able to have sort of like the 3D type of, of fighter, but the game is just it's just not very good. Um, I, I'm I'm not impressed with this list here. Again, they had I forget what the, what the Genesis Mini have it had t- uh, 30, forty games, forty two games, yeah, yeah, 42 yeah, forty two games. games. And I mean, other than the Sega Hedgehog, you know, which I I can play that one, but it it just didn't do anything. They didn't have any of the sports games on it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, even, oh, even I gotta even, disagree with you, man. The Sega Genesis Mini is probably my top two top three mini consoles that have been released they did and, a fantastic job again you're you're a little younger than me those I, those games i'm about 40 years younger than you yes yes <laughs> and uh so you you grew up playing uh, possibly playing those games none of those games <laughs> appeal to me at all you know what i mean um but hey i again i love the, the concept there's a similar uh, arcade maker that has that um, that little arcade, and then they have like with Street Fighter. Do you guys remember who made that? Um, they had the little Street Fighter, and then you had the extra controller that you can play two player with it. Um, the New oh, Wave Toys? Are you talking about like the yeah New Wave Toys? Yes. New Wave, yeah, New Wave the, Toys. Yep. The right. replicate. Yes. So I think that's that's pretty cool because I, I saw that they had a little uh, joystick with the other player on it. So I think that concept is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I got to say, you know, I loved Sega. Sega kind of felt like to me, maybe it was just the way I took it growing up, but like Nintendo was the, and I think they still hold this today, is we are the fun, safe, friendly family option, right? Yep. And like like Sega was like, we're the rock stars, right? Like if you, if you have Sega, because guys, when we grew up in the 90s, uh, it was all about anti-authority, you know, everything on TV was about anti-authority, right? That was the <laughs> motto in the 90s. Uh, I'm, I'm not joking. Everything was from your from your professional wrestling characters to all your TV yeah. shows. Everything was anti-authority and, and Sega was no different. Sega was like, we're the bad boys, even though we have the same games, right? Like Aladdin and all this stuff, same games. But it just seemed like if you had Sega, you were one of the bad boys, right? And that's the way I took it growing up. Like Nintendo's for you know all the little, all the little brown nosers, right? Oh, uh, whatever, Sega. man. Sega, <laughs> wow. Sega's where it's at. Wow, Sega was where it's at. So okay, well, I'll, I'm looking forward to segment four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Now, taking a look here, this does look bigger than the Neo Geo Mini. I mentioned that in the video I did on my channel, as well as I do love the the bezel around the monitor. It makes it look like an old CRT TV, and uh, I just think it's a nice touch. Mm-hmm. I I think it I think you know considering it's a candy cab and candy cabs usually aren't popular in the United States, um, I think it's I think it's kind of sexy. I'm digging the green buttons and and, and the green stickers and everything. So, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Rusty Greer says he used to watch Law and Order every single time, and yes, Sega went out of business. I know, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good idea, Zero Hero. It was a good idea while it lasted. So let's get that. Let's get that off of there. Now, guys, one of my favorite things that I loved about Sega uh, growing up 
was whenever you turned on a game on the system, you would hear Sega, mm -hmm. right? So yes. I figured I figured for the uh, folks tuning in, we got about 75 people online right now. I figured I'd uh, give you a little compilation of all the Sega intros from the various systems. So it's going to take about 60 seconds to play them all. Uh, so stick with us and do us a favor. When we're done, make sure you put in the chat, how many of those do you remember? How many of those do you recognize? And also, we'll, the hosts here will talk about it as well. So let's, uh, hey, Rostalgia, do me a favor. Say, let's get started. <laughs> All right, let's get started. <laughs> there you go, guys. What'd you think of that? Do you get now? Maybe, maybe the reason why Sega failed is by the time they did the Sega Saturn and uh, Sega Dreamcast intro, they stopped saying Sega. Like if they had kept doing that, the company mm -hmm. would have still been making consoles today, right? I, I, I mean, don't know if I'd go that Sega. far. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's actually pretty well documented why Sega went out of business. It's, it is right around the Saturn time, and that is partially at fault, but we'll yeah. get into it. Yeah, well, we're making people feel old. But uh, they definitely should have left the, the Sega portion in there. And, and the Mini doesn't have that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, I, when, I, when I turned it on and it didn't say Sega, I, I threw that thing across the room. Like, what the hell is this for? <laughs> what, what, what is this? What is this? This is not Sega. It's so petty, you know? man. <laughs> hey, you know, you, you set me up. You got me already. Got my mouth already for a cold drink <laughs> and no Sega. Who does that? Wow. Uh, you left out the key. The <laughs> yeah, sorry. Two, some people only remember two. A lot of folks in the chat are putting down how many of those they recognize. Now, there were a couple in there that I didn't remember. Like, what was the little green one? Uh, Pico. Sega, Sega Pico. Pico. Sega Pico? Yeah, like, I never had yeah. one of those. No. When we, when we when we get to the console part of the show, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about which ones we did and didn't own. Was uh, the Pico even in North America? I don't know. I, I've well, never I seen it. Oh, I thought yeah. it was, yeah, I thought that was a Japan-only yeah. release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but man, Sega, the bad boys of of the uh, video game industry, right? So, um, where did it go? Yeah. So, taking a look here at what are some of the best and worst Sega games of all time. Now, I'm going to kick this right off because I don't want to wait until it's my turn. I'm just going to tell you, worst Sega game of all time: Echo the Dolphin. The most annoying oh, and the completely worst, agree. Worst game of all time. I hate that game. We talked about this on my other podcast, Legend Center. Yeah. I, you get lost, you get dizzy, your your dolphin would drown. You had no idea what the purpose, what the point, where you were supposed to go, or what that you're just, supposed to do. That just sounds like you're really bad at gaming. I don't know, man. I that, <laughs> that had so many sequels for so many different consoles. There's no way that could be the worst game. I got a lot of uh, folks. Well, I got, a, I got. Hey, we got. I got a lot of folks agreeing with me in the chat that Echo, the Dolphin, <laughs> so, is is a pile of hot garbage. I hate that game. I will. I will never play that game again. So, and if you um, thought otherwise, you were on drugs. So, <laughs> so, about eight years ago, I did a review of Echo the Dolphin on YouTube, and I uh, basically said exactly what you just said. I didn't like it for a lot of the same reasons. Yeah. And uh, anyways, it started getting a lot of negative attention, and I was like, I wonder why. So someone had saw the video from some kind of like fan page for Echo the Dolphin, <laughs> and it was like the stars of the moon, and it's something to do with the game, and like yeah. the backstory, and yeah, they basically lynched me with this whole fan community for Echo the Dolphin all came after me because I didn't like it. I'm not saying it's a terrible game. I just don't <laughs> like it. I don't enjoy it. Well, it serves you right because that's you deserve that. It's you okay. I'll, I'll say it. I'll Echo say it. It's a terrible game. It's the worst <laughs> thing that was ever made. Like what, what guy was in a room and said, you know what will be really cool, guys? Let's make a game about a dolphin, right? And like they just kind of swim around and like find these gems or whatever. You know, because that's what dolphins do. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, right. It's just, and they make who, them drown. And, and who who is the guy that said, "Let's do it"? That sounds awesome, and we're gonna put the marketing train behind this thing. And <laughs> oh man, uh, <laughs> my, my big my my big problem with the dolphin is it always made me feel really uncomfortable because we had that air timer and the hit timer. Like it stressed me out to play it. It wasn't enjoyable. I always was stressed out trying to keep up with my air management and. Uh, you know, health management. I, I just couldn't enjoy it. It was too frustrating that way. 
Exactly, exactly. Well, I'm happy to see that the majority of the chat has spoken. They've agreed with P-Dubs that Echo the Dolphin is the worst Sega game of all time. And <laughs> I I will get that tattooed on my body at some point. So I don't know, um, I don't know if I'm, it's the worst of all time. I don't but think I, it's not great. <laughs> I'm going to, okay, I'm going to go out on a limb here and get crucified. All right. Because it's a Sonic game. What? Okay, hold on. Just hear me Stop out. Stop talking. Stop hold talking. On. Hold on. Hear me out for one sec. The Sonic game that they had ported over for the Game Gear. And it was horrible to play that game because you're playing it on such a tiny screen. And Sonic took up like a third of the screen. So you couldn't see anything that was happening in front of you or behind you. It was like almost impossible to play that game. So that, that I think, in my opinion, maybe not the worst game in Sega history, but probably not it maybe the worst game in Sega history, at least from my perspective, just because you can't you can't really play it that well. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you're wrong, but that's fine. <laughs> um, Carl, what about you? What was your and we're gonna get to the good stuff, guys, because this is the Sega show. I figured let's let's get it out of the way first. Let's just say what our, our worst game is. For me, Echo the Dolphin for you, it was the Game Gear version of Sonic. What about you two gentlemen? I don't recall. I don't. I, you know, again, my most of my uh, list consists of the sports games, so I didn't. I didn't venture off uh, too into too much of it. So, yeah. what about you, Michael B? You stole mine. You said Echo the Dolphin. That's what I said. <laughs> you weren't gonna say <laughs> that. No, I, I'm. I'm serious. Go back and look through my videos. I literally did a review, and <laughs> I jokingly started the whole review, did a whole intro video, and I said, "Yeah, it's terrible." And that was the end of the video. <laughs> Genius. All right. Well, then there you go, guys. I guess it's if two of the hosts of the show can agree that it's the worst game of all time, it surely is. Um. Anyway, um, okay, so let's talk about let's talk about favorites, right? So I'm gonna have to give you I'm gonna have to give you like two or three of them because it's kind of tough for it's kind of tough for me, right? So I love um, I love Eternal Champions, and you know if I don't know if you guys remember that it's like a fighting game, and had used the six button controller, mm -hmm. and I if. It's hard as hell, but once you learned everybody's moves, it was a really, really cool game. I really loved it. I played the hell out of Eternal Champions. Of course, I played all the EA Sports games, Carl. Um, but then also on the Sega CD, for some reason when I was younger, I was and I was addicted to uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula on the Sega CD. And I really, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Michael B. I liked it. And maybe it's because I like vampires, except I don't think they should sparkle in the sunlight. But, you know, minus that, I love vampire. But yeah, look at this. We got some folks in the chat. JW Primetime says Eternal Champions was a game changer. Guys, if you played Eternal Champions, let me know. Throw it in the chat. That's probably one of my favorite uh, personal Sega games of all time. Well, outside of the you know sports things, I definitely mm -hmm. like Aladdin. Aladdin was a fun, fun game. I mean, I could play that thing for hours and hours, uh, for sure. But so I don't know if it's Aladdin or Sonic the Hedgehog. Hedgehog. I mean, I still hear those rings, that noise when you lost all your rings, man. That that was just iconic. Uh, I lost tons of those things, but that game was just fun to play. I enjoyed the heck out of those those two platform games for sure. What about what about you, Michael B? nostalgia mike what do you got favorites it, this is such a hard question to ask because you're asking favorite sega games and there's so many systems and so there's many so games. many i know so when you when you were mentioning like worst video i just focused on the genesis and it, you got me going with echo and i couldn't think but realistically <laughs> i'll go back for a second realistically marky mark make my video for the sega cd is the worst sega game ever made <laughs> final answer <laughs> Excellent choice, okay. but come on. Okay. Going but back, was... favorite games, and you're asking me to go, this is so hard, and I'm going to just go back to Genesis because that's kind of what I prepared for here, but mm -hmm. some of my favorite games, I'm always going to go Streets of Rage, and I know this is going to make people mad, but I prefer Streets of Rage 1 over Streets of Rage 2. What? Everybody goes nuts about that. I just find Streets of Rage 2 a little easy. I like Streets of Rage 1 better. I like the original, I like the classic. I like the music better. I think Streets of Rage 2 is an excellent game. 
I just like Streets of Rage one more. Some really good games that I think people should check out if they haven't. There's some licensed games on the Genesis that are actually excellent. I've talked to death about Ghostbusters on the Sega Genesis. Best Ghostbusters game up until uh, the 2000, was it 2012, 2013 game they remade? And it might be even better than that one. So check out Ghostbusters. And believe it or not, there's a really good Dick Tracy game on the Genesis too. Really, really, really good. It's a, uh, it's a little bit slow because it's a side-scrolling action platformer, but it also has like a third-person view where people come out and you use a Tommy gun to weigh them down. So those are some games I would suggest you to check out. What about Michael Jackson's Moonwalker? That was awesome on the Sega. Come on now. It it, it was absolutely <laughs> was. That was a big. No, I, I rented it all the time when I was a kid. I rented Streets Rage 1, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, and Spider-Man. Like, every single time I rented Genesis every weekend. They're great games, 100%. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, what about... Uh, what was it? What what sports games? Were you primarily the football guy, Carl? Or would you also pick up... What wasn't it like the NBA? The EA Sports NBA game came out every year? No, no, I'll tell trash. you. No, the, the, <laughs> the best cool. Sega trash. game, the best Sega game ever was the was the Dreamcast, the uh, NFL uh, 2K. When two, 2K created uh, Madden. Okay. When 2K came out, Madden said, "There's no way we got to stop this. We got to get an exclusive." license with the NFL so nobody can make a football game ever again with their actual players because 2K because if you think about that time Madden games were expensive as heck 2K came out I think it was like $20 for that 2K and mm-hmm. that that thing just blew anything out the water and as soon as that happened <laughs> they got an exclusive deal where nobody could put any NFL players on their yeah. games ever ever again you know. That's not a that, that's not a joke. I know people that actually didn't buy a PlayStation Two just because they wanted to go get the two K games for Dreamcast. Yep. Yep. They they openly chose the Dreamcast over the PlayStation Two when it was yep. both readily available. But I, I'm going to disagree with you, Carol. You already mentioned the greatest sports game Sega ever made. Well, that was made for Sega. It's NHL '94. Yeah, it's so good Canadian. they're still making copies of it today. I know. Yeah, because I'm a Canadian, Canadian would say that. <laughs> a Canadian right. would say that. Listen, hold on. He's not wrong. <laughs> I'm he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Hey, come on. Uh, Virtua Tennis on the Dreamcast was pretty slick. I mean, that 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 was a that played pretty well. That played pretty well. It's not well. NHL 94. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> well, of course not. <laughs> NHL, <laughs> NHL 94, they still do like tournaments and stuff for that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's they, pretty oh, cool. it's big. Oh. Yeah. Believe it or not, they actually still update that game today. There's a community out there. I'm, uh, I follow it, and uh, every single year they update the rosters to the current NHL rosters for NHL '94. So you can still play as new teams. Everything. Mm-hmm. People are nuts with it. Kind of like Tech Mobile, right? They update right, Tech right, Mobile right. every year. Yep. Now, now uh, switching gears real quick to fighting games. I mean, you, you remember Mortal Monday, uh, Mortal Kombat Two, or Mortal Kombat? I mean, uh, and then uh, Street Fighter Two. That was all on the Sega as well. Like. This is when we were starting to more, hey, we don't have to go to the arcades. We can stay at home and play these games, right? When all that yep. stuff was happening. So um, mm-hmm. I remember playing Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter on my Genesis a lot uh, back in the day. But I would always play more Mortal Kombat than Street Fighter. I don't know why. I'm just, I'm a Mortal Kombat guy. Street Fighter was just so cartoony to me. It's still cartoony to this day, you know? I'm um, the opposite. I was a Street Fighter guy over Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and I bet you liked. Uh, I bet you liked. What was it? Uh, was it Samurai Showdown? Did you like Samurai Showdown as well? I never played that actually. Yeah, and then um, what was the other one? King of Fighters. King, King of, of Fighters. Fighters. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, Fatal Fury used to have yeah. that. Used to play Fatal Fury. That was great. Uh, Soul Calibur made Dreamcast. Yes, I love playing Soul Calibur. That on is Dreamcast. so true. Soul yeah. Calibur was was the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just did a stream the other day where I was like, I'm going to play some Back to the Future console games. And they were <laughs> dog poo. I mean, they were the worst console mm. games I've ever played. They were terrible. They were terrible. <laughs> and and halfway through the stream, I gave up and I started playing um, Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast. <laughs> so like people would see like the thumbnail or they get the push notification. They're like, oh, P-Dubs is playing Back to the Future. And then they go in and instead of Back to the Future, they see this uh, this fat guy playing uh um soul caliber instead 
<laughs> so like if you guys go back and watch my stream like halfway through i'm like yeah guys if you're just tuning in back to the future games suck we're playing this instead <laughs> it's pretty so, funny that's called so bait and switch by the way <laughs> yeah. so th this is the one time i'll use a nostalgia move here now the reason why did you play the nest version of back to the future the first one you're talking what? to p-dubs yeah Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was catching up on the chat. What'd you say? Did you play the NES version on your stream? I caught some of your stream, not all of it. I played. No, not is the NES version where it's a side scroller. No, it's it's kind of like a weird. Um, it's like, like Paper, Paper Boy. Boy. Yeah, yeah, I played like it. Paper. It sucked. It was terrible. It doesn't suck. It's just you suck. <laughs> no, it's terrible. <laughs> it's not terrible. It's a game of skill. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I I beat it. It's great. <laughs> it's really, really hard, though. That's what that's what this show is going to turn into. It doesn't suck. You suck. No, you <laughs> suck. That's what happens when you have four guys. You got four opinions. Carl, uh, maybe we should bring back the loft report and fire these Canadians. <laughs> what do you think? You know, man, I, man, I would go out and get me a Sega Dreamcast. Just play no caliber. No caliber. I think. I think you know people make a big deal about Mortal Kombat and all that stuff. I think So Caliber to to date is still one Great. of the best fighting games. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know that uh, anything's really touched it. Yeah, it's aged really well too. Like if you throw on Soul Calibur even today, like it's still a really good game yeah. to play actually on those consoles. So yep. Well, guys, I have a little timeline here. Let's take a walk through. Um, let's take a walk through history here. So let me get my screen shared for you. I want you guys to feel our age and wonder why we all have gray in our beards and stuff like that. Hold so on, you, you speak for yourself. Well, well, that's look just because you use just for men and the rest <laughs> of us don't. <laughs> you know, you know. But take a look at this, guys. So, uh, what do you see here? What well, what do you look at the dates, brothers? Look at the dates in nineteen. Um, 1988, the Genesis, you know, the one that the first one that I had was right there, 1988. Did any of you have the Mega Drive or the Master Systems or any of that stuff? My first one was the Genesis in 1988, as well as folks in the chat. Let us know which one of these was your first console. I had the 1987. That was my first one. Mm -hmm. And then I had the Genesis 88. Mm hmm. I had, I, and then the, and then the, say, uh, the Saturn or the Dreamcast. I'm sorry, I didn't have any of those other things, the CDs, any of those. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? Keep going. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I'm gonna start by saying I love Sega. So I uh -oh. need to preface this but, by saying but, that, <laughs> but because hold on. So I grew up as a Nintendo boy. Yeah, we we can tell. Okay. <laughs> it's not like the shirt gave it away or anything. Are but... you wearing a Nintendo shirt on our Sega show? Yeah, of course I'm wearing a Nintendo. Oh, you are a jerk. You told and you told me no cursing. I'm about to break the no cursing rule before the show. Nostalgia's like P-dubs. Let's keep it PG. Okay. So here's the thing. I didn't own any of these even close to launch. The first Sega console I actually ever owned was a Dreamcast. And I think I was like 15 years old at the time. So we're talking like early 2000s to mid 2000s ish. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I didn't own anything. But I will say Dreamcast to this day is still my favorite console out of anything I've ever had. Modern, retro, Good. it doesn't matter. It's a great system. It's incredible. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that it didn't have a very long lifespan, but it's 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 number one in my book. So I didn't own any of these things. Now I've I've since owned lots of these, but I as a kid, man, I grew up thinking like Nintendo was the console and your parents would buy you a Sega if they didn't like you. Like that's how I grew up thinking. <laughs> oh, so what? like yeah. Well, that, your parents what? told you that cuz they didn't want to spend the money to get it. <laughs> no, uh I, the, I, Nintendo I, Nintendo I, again, I have both of them and I love and I think if the mini I, I actually tried to buy the the Super Nintendo one. And then the seller said they didn't have it or some crazy thing, so they had to give me mo my money back. But I think I would have been happier with the, the Super Nintendo Mini than I am with the the Sega Genesis. But the the but the Nintendo always have been like for the kids, just the kid friendly, the kitty one. Um, but they had great games, despite that. 
back. <laughs> I love so, this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come to nostalgia's defense here a little bit because yeah. maybe this is a Canadian thing, but realistically, yeah, <laughs> if you couldn't get a Nintendo because uh, there was a shortage of them here in Canada when uh, right from like '86 up to about '88, it was really hard to get one. So some parents got tired and frustrated of trying to find one and actually right. went out and bought master systems for their kids. So yes, if your parents couldn't get you a Nintendo, they got you a master system here. That is a Canadian thing. Yep. All right. Well, let, let me uh, let's switch gears here. So because uh, eventually we're, we're towards the end of the show, we're going to talk about Nintendo versus Sega. And, and I'm sure this conversation is going to get a little heated. As, uh, so you folks might want to make sure you stay tuned to the end. But uh, leading into that, what do you notice when you take a look at this timeline? One of these things is not like the other. What is that one thing that's not like the other? Put it in the chat. Or or some or one of the hosts, whoever. Let's see if you guys in the chat can beat the hosts. Thirty two X. Really? Oh, I was gonna say Game Gear. Correct, man. It's portable. Yes, yes. Uh, Sega was. <laughs> so, so you're you're gonna go with the portable one instead of the console tumor that's there in 1994. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not the Tuma. It's not the Tuma. It's a thirty two X. But yeah, guys, one of these things is not like the other. 15 years of releasing systems and only one of them being handheld. So let me just ask you this, because I'm just here to make conversation. That's the joy of being the host. What if they made more handhelds or improved the Game Gear? What if by like 93, we had like the Game Gear Pro or something? They would have gone into this, bankruptcy so much faster. So you think this, so? This whole conversation is a fallacy because they did make another handheld. It's called the Sega Nomad, which was a portable Sega Genesis. Mm -hmm. It's not on this timeline. It's not on this timeline, but the, so I'm back to winning with the tumor. Dry land is not a myth. I've seen it. That's what Michael B sounds like right now. Dry land is not a myth. I've seen it. The Sega Nomad was a uh, fake news, alternative facts. It never existed. Um, this is the the true history of Sega right here on this timeline. So um, because the internet yeah. never lies, right? That's yeah. right. So and here last week we find out. No, I'm sorry. Two weeks ago, Sega's like, oh, we're gonna bring back the Game Gear Mini, and yeah. it's about it's about the size of a crouton. And you know what what are we what are we supposed to do with that? We're gonna pay a hundred bucks to play two games on something the size of a crouton, like. Oh come on! Four games. I think it's four games. I it? was I was so oh, disappointed. It's two games actually. Yeah, yeah. Is, was... is it is it really a hundred bucks? I thought it was fifty US to get four games. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it is the four games. Yeah. So I'm I'm pretty sure it's around sixty bucks. And then I don't know if you got to pay the shipping. I can't remember. I bought I bought all of them. I literally was like, ooh, Skittles. <laughs> I'm going to take all of the colors. And uh, yeah, that was expensive. And um, hopefully, yeah. well, it's definitely not going to be worth it. But hoping hoping we can mod it i think that mm -hmm. it'll have some sort of novelty factor if we can add more games to it yeah andrew uh, Pe andrew peacock is across the pond and he is loving the stream so let's give a special shout out andrew what's up brother and uh thanks for watching from across the pond now guys i gotta say though all right so let, let okay so you guys think that if they had released another handheld it, just, it wouldn't have helped it wouldn't have helped save them or anything no, of that nature. Okay. No, Nintendo okay. had that market cornered so heavily. There was right. nothing anyone was going to do to compare with or to compete with them. Yeah. Now, obviously, now I've I've watched a few specials like in the past documentaries and stuff where they talk about the history of the Sega 32X and the Sega Saturn, right? And how now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The 32X is the one that was being developed by Sega of America, right? And the Sega Saturn was the program that Sega Japan was working on. And it's like they were working on it at the same time. And they got launched like in 94. So you release the 32X, you launch it. And then short, short time later, you come out with the Sega Saturn. Now a CD-based system, right? And kind of confuse your, um, confuse your customers, right? So what do you guys think about the 32X and the Saturn? And hopefully I got that right on which team was working on it. I think I did. So so I thought there was another console that was also being developed at the same time as the 32X. Another, uh, They were going to go for another 
actual console 32-bit cartridge system, and uh, they decided to go with the add-on instead. Do, do either of you guys know anything about that? Nope. I think I think it was that, and then it what was it? It was that, then it became the 32x. Is that what they yeah. did? I think. Um, either way, uh, I mean, come on, you, it's 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 a transformer. I mean, look, your your Sega became a transformer, right? Tower of Power. <laughs> Well, they, they, realistically, I think this gets confused a lot of times because what they were actually trying to do with the 32X and the Sega CD was just extend the life cycle of the Sega Genesis. It wasn't really supposed to be a new system. It was just supposed to bring new life to the Sega Genesis. That's why it was the add-on. Uh, but it looked as if it was a competing system to the Saturn, which came out really too early. And a lot of the problem, what happened with the Saturn launch is they just botched it here in North America because I think they announced it at, uh, was it E3? And it was already in stores the next day. There was no build up, no time for mm -hmm. pre-orders. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what bombed the Saturn's life cycle. And people were uh, getting fatigue from buying Sega systems because you think about Nintendo, we had mm -hmm. the Super Nintendo and then nothing really else except for the virtual boy, but you know, everybody gets blurry in the memory for that one. So it was just the super Nintendo. And then we had the N64. So, you know, there's a lot of reliability built there, but with Sega, you had the Sega Genesis, then you had the Sega CD, then you had the Genesis model two, then you had the Sega CD model two, then you had the 32 X and then you had the Sega Genesis model three, the Sega CDX. So you weren't building reliability with your consumer base because you kept changing the model and coming up with cheaper versions. And <laughs> it just frustrated people. Yeah. Yeah. So, but now that, uh, Oh, did we lose Carl? Nope. He's back. Um, so which one of these was your, would have been your favorite? I mean, I think dreamcast is going to be, um, Steven's answer, right? Mm -hmm. I lo I loved that original Genesis. Um, I played that thing until it just wouldn't work anymore. Um, the 93, remake version i don't think i ever had one i remember seeing them at my buddy's houses um and then i missed i missed this was it i i missed i have a dreamcast now the wife picked it up but i think i missed the saturn train i think if that's what it was uh growing up so i because i had the 32x and i was happy with it um <laughs> <laughs> did you have the full library <laughs> of, of 30 games i think so but you know but man this stuff this i mean we're talking this is a long time ago it's hard to remember we've had so many consoles and cartridges and games go in and out of your life over the years it's hard to remember every every single one isn't it so mm -hmm. um, yeah you know what as it growing up i mean mm -hmm. it's been mentioned a million times before i'm, I'm the youngest guy around and like when the Genesis was actually originally released, I wasn't even born yet. So from my childhood, I remember specifically the only Sega that I was actually really familiar with. I did see the Game Gear, um, but the actual console was that was that version three Genesis, that really small one that everyone seems to hate. And that was the one that like I said, I, I kind of had Nintendo products. A cousin of mine ended up getting a Genesis and that's the Genesis he got. And that's because that was the new Genesis when I was like, five years old. So hmm. that's what I actually saw. And that's what I remember when people talk about Genesis, that's the first thing that comes into my mind. I don't actually think of like the original Sega Genesis model. So it's, it's interesting to, to kind of look at that timeline and, yeah. and really like see exactly when all these things came out. Yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say, Carl? Yeah. I don't know if I'm having some issues. My internet is doing some crazy stuff over here <laughs> yeah you keep you keep flipping around uh we keep losing you but don't worry hang in there brother we'll have faith <laughs> so uh, maybe carl's having the same issue that the genesis 3 had bad capacitors <laughs> <laughs> oh that's hilarious that's hilarious um okay so yes yeah, so um yeah we're having we're having technical internet stuff going on right now um I don't know about you guys, but here in Arizona, it's like 115 degrees right now. And when it's this hot, for some reason, my internet crawls. I don't know why. You know, it's the heat, maybe. I don't know. Who cares? Um, okay, so next topic we had here was um, the disappearing and reappearing Detroit love. There he is. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what a miss. What a miss. Burn. Oh, we were just we were just uh we were just looking at the weather and stuff. Okay, so <laughs> So, okay, so what year did they uh, turn off a uh, pop quiz, guys? What year was the year that they turned off uh, uh, this, um, the, the Dreamcast? They shut it down and they said, we're just going to focus on being a publisher. We're not going to be a, you know, a um, manufacturer of systems anymore. What year? Pop quiz. Pop quiz, hot shot. My guess, 2001. That's correct. Way oh, to show, way to show yeah. it off. Yep, I actually dude. totally just guessed. Yep, yep, 2001. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can get another pop quiz here. Um, I thought I had a couple more on here. I'll I'll not answer this next one. I don't want to I don't want to take take your 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 uh, your thunder away from you. All right. Um what year was the first Sonic the Hedgehog game released? 91. Very good. Very Ooh. good. Um and then how many bits was the Sega Saturn? How many bits? The Sega Saturn. Uh huh. I'm going to 32. That's right. 32. Very good. Very good. What was it? What was the one you had? I love the people are throwing guesses. And unfortunately, guys, there's a 90 second delay on the chat. So um, let's see here. What was your what was your question? Nostalgia? What's your quiz? I have a quiz. Oh, I didn't. I didn't have a quiz. No, you said you had a you had a, pot, a trivia, a question. Mm, I don't remember that. <laughs> um, yeah, you did. Okay, uh, my question. Just now, you said I don't want to steal your thunder. I have a question. That's what I thought I heard. Oh no, I said I wasn't going to answer your questions anymore. Oh, got you. I'm sorry. I apologize. This is what happens when you are trying to do four things at once. So. That's okay. All right. Hey, like, guys. I'll come up with a question. I just don't know if the answer is going to be right. Hey, guys, it's the first episode. Cut us a break. <laughs> <laughs> We've never done this before. <laughs> uh, actually, we have, but let's not remind them of that. <laughs> okay, let's get let's get into it. Let's get into the hot debate because we have. We've we've had roughly 90 people watching this entire time, and we have uh, about 10, 15 minutes left of the show. So Sega versus Nintendo, or if you want, we can kind of drill it down to Super Nintendo. And Rostalgia, I'll let you go first before I crush you, but go ahead. You you can try to crush me. It doesn't mean you're right. First off. <laughs> so hold on. We gotta like I said, if we're if we're talking specifically Genesis versus Super Nintendo. Yeah, let's just focus on that. I'm gonna say that my bias leans towards Nintendo simply because that's what I grew up with. That's the types of console, or that is the console I had in the house. And the Super Nintendo was the first console I ever owned. So um, my my heart kind of leans towards that. That being said, okay, so Super Nintendo is better, but I will say that there are definitely games that were released parallel when you have your Super Nintendo releases and your Genesis releases. Most of the games that were released parallel to one another, the Genesis version was better. There were some, yeah, there correct. were some correct. that were better on the yeah. Super Nintendo. And the ones that come to my mind are like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. That was way better on the Super Nintendo than it was on the Genesis because the Genesis just got some like weird fighting version. They didn't actually get the beat em up. Or I'm thinking the Lion King, I think was another one. I think Lion King was really good on Super Nintendo and it was just mediocre. No. On it the music, nah, it was mediocre, man. No, you can no, say what the, you want. The, it was the garbage. Lion, the Lion I'm trying the to be Lion, nice. The Lion King music was better on the Genesis version than on the Super Nintendo. Mm, I, I'll let you. I'll let you think that. It, um, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of like. There's got to be. Oh, Aladdin, another Disney game. Aladdin, in my opinion, better on Super Nintendo than Genesis. People are gonna fight over that. Why? Why? Oh, it's just better. Yeah, it's That's, better. No, it's this not. Look, all no. right. I'm gonna dis <laughs> uh, this is all I need to say about Aladdin that is going to crush anything that Rostalgia just said. Nintendo, once again, if you guys were here when the show started, I said, we're the fun, family-friendly, safe, you know, channel. Aladdin, Super Nintendo, Aladdin has no sword. On the Sega version... He had apples! On the Sega version, he swords. He has apples, man. On the on the Sega version, Aladdin has his sword. You know what I'm saying? Because Sega was we're rock stars. You know what I mean? Like just because Aladdin has a sword, your kid's not going to go outside and kill somebody. You listen you know? on on Super Nintendo. You had to develop sniper <laughs> skills, man. You had to throw apples from across the screen. 
I what would they rather do with the sword. They can't do anything with that. Kill them. Kill them with the sword. That's right. You just got to keep then, your distance. You toss the apple. They get dazed. You jump on their head and you move along. Like that's how that's how gaming should be done. Every oh. game going forward from now on should just have apples that you throw at your enemies. You're probably the guy who supported wow. when they did a remastering of ET and they took away all the handguns from all the guys on ET. Yeah. In the yeah. movie, like that all the guys, sense. all the guys chasing the kids no longer have hand, no longer are holding guns. Why would nowadays? they? Because why because intimidation those, factor the, man they the, were adults and a kid come on duh. come on they were four rebel terrorists with an alien terrorist from out of space you know i mean come on man they <laughs> we needed to be armed we needed to be protected i don't know from this, he was pretty soft this crazy this crazy three foot tall yoda looking thing <laughs> that you know wants to you know eat all our candy and take all our plants like et had issues bro <laughs> <laughs> wow Okay, I'm still my my <laughs> opinion has not changed. Aladdin is better on Super Nintendo. I no, accept not. your apology. It is not. <laughs> but I honestly I just like when I think about the game lineup on Super Nintendo, there's just so many that were awesome. Like when I compare Sonic to Super Mario World cuz you're looking at flagship titles, I got to say Super Mario World was better. It was just so much there was just so much more to do. Sonic was fun and it was a good game, but it, Super Mario was like next level. And then, I mean, even when you're looking at some of the fighting games, Mortal Kombat, for sure, better on Genesis. It wasn't censored in the same way that it was on the Super Nintendo. Um, graphically, it looked better on the Genesis. But when we go to Street Fighter, which was was my preference in terms of fighting games, I think the Street Fighter Super Nintendo game was better than the Genesis version. So, All right. Um, <laughs> so because of that... You're Mike, now... you're wrong, too. Like, I don't care. <laughs> All right, all right, me, man. all right, all right. For 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 those watching, there's a simple way to fix this problem, right? And it goes a little something like this. There you go. So now, Much we, now we can talk about Sega. Now we can talk about Sega, right? We got rid of the hater. The hater's gone. All right, Michael B. Take nostalgia to school. So. Uh... We've talked about the big difference between Super Nintendo and Sega. Like these weren't marketed towards the same people. I mean, Sega was always advertised as the more adult system yes. because a, a lot of it had to do with the fact we'll talk about this. Nintendo had a somewhat illegal monopoly on most of the licenses and titles. So Sega had to focus on their own arcade library. They focused on, we're bringing the arcade experience home. This is for an older audience. They were a little bit more lenient, but where that really came from, you just mentioned it, was Mortal Kombat. We had a really watered down, maybe it looked better on the Super Nintendo. Some people say it, it played better. I, I don't agree with them. The Sega version had the blood code, Abacab, so you could have blood. You could have the Mortal Kombat at home. And that's what really hammered that debate between the two <laughs> systems on which one was the adult system. You could kill people in Mortal Kombat. In the Super Nintendo version, you could put their your foot in their yeah. chest for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> the blood code. No, and that's fair. Yeah. I did say I did say that the Mortal Kombat on Genesis is better. But there's also you mentioned that you prefer Street Fighter more on Super Nintendo compared to Sega Genesis. There's also I, I know we're going to get into this about blast processing, which is a fake thing that doesn't really exist. But some people prefer the speed of Street Fighter Two Championship Edition to the Super Nintendo game. So you know it depends on what you want. There's something different about the way it plays. Uh, I always found I'm personally a Super Nintendo guy. I I love the Super Nintendo. I think it had more vibrant colors. I think it had a better sound processing chip. But there's other people that prefer the gritty and grainy and dark and dank look of the Sega Genesis and the dank kind of twangy sounds of it. It, it just it all depends on what you prefer. I think the Super Nintendo is the better system, but I certainly see merit in the Sega Genesis camp as well. And well, well hold and you, before, what, before we get more, because I'm seeing a bunch of people in the comment section being like, "Why are you guys having a bunch of guys that are pro Nintendo on a Sega?" show and i gotta say like i said earlier my number one console is a sega console for sure it, it's it takes the number one spot and i think if i'm looking back i'm thinking that there's probably more sega consoles in my top 10 than there are nintendo or other other brands um but we're talking super nintendo versus genesis here so oh and as zero hero mentioned he didn't see any adults when i say adult system when I was 13, I wanted to be an adult. So I didn't want to be assumed as kiddies. So yeah. you're talking about teens. I'm, I'm, I say adult, yeah. but I mean teenagers, realistically. Yeah. yeah, we were watching Monday Night Raw. We were watching WCW Monday Nitro. We were wanting to be the NWO, the DX, and play on our Segas. 
And I think fighting games on the Sega was better because the buttons were bigger on the controllers, in my opinion. Am yeah. I right? Am I wrong? Yeah, if, you had, if you had a six-button controller. <laughs> yeah, the controllers definitely... The controllers would be a thing that would carry on years later with the um, Xbox and those things as well. They made mistakes with the, that as well. But my, my history is a little different because I had uh, I was 20-something when those things first came out. Uh, right. So I was an adult, and we wanted to do the sports. Uh, and then my kid, I had kids, and the kids started getting older, so I started leaning more towards the Sega because I – mean, I'm sorry, to Nintendo because uh, you weren't allowed to run with scissors or swords anymore. Um at apples you know, instead. Right, right. So you had to throw apples at things in order to hurt them. Um, so, 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 so that's why it sort of switched for me. And then, you know, eventually Sega died, and then I had Nintendo sixty four. Uh, you know what I mean? So, you know, my mine's a little different. I had to get more kid friendly things because I had kids in the house, and and, and they were starting getting older, wanting to play games. Um, but by far, Sega definitely was the best. Uh, Sega definitely kicked butt uh, as, as long as they were around. But once they were gone, Nintendo. Uh, became the king that they have been trying to be all that time. So, mm-hmm. and, and to be fair, it's also important to note that uh, somebody else mentioned it in the chat. I can't remember where it was, but somebody had made the point to say that the Genesis was a more powerful and more capable console than the Super Nintendo, and that's a hundred percent true. It did have a slightly more powerful CPU in it, and right. it could handle more. That doesn't make it better, though. More powerful is not better. I mean, I'm trying to think of when. The original Xbox was more powerful than the PlayStation. Well, well, the well PlayStation well, just well, dummied it in I every mean, way. I mean, when we we can look at it today because we know a little more today than we did when we were kids, right? And if you look at it today, if you compare games like Yeez and Mickey Mania, the colors and the contrast and everything just looked better on Sega than it did Super Nintendo. There sure. are there are so many games. That graphically and visually, if you put them on two TVs side by side now, you will. A lot of you would agree with me that the Sega versions looked better. Now, when we're when we're kids, we didn't notice that, right? Like we didn't care. Like when we're thirteen, we didn't care. Like I think for the most part, it was just like, "I'm on Team Sega" or "I'm on Team Nintendo." The, the, I'm on Team Nintendo. The Sega oh. had had a more advanced color palette, so there's that, which is going to give it more vibrancy and it's going to look better on screen. So, I mean, there's there's that to consider. Did you say Sega had a more advanced color palette? I thought it did. Yeah, didn't it? The Genesis had no. a more advanced color palette <laughs> it, than the Super Nintendo, didn't it? All, all dark and like dank colors, maybe. I mean, you I mean, got them flip flop, like, but you got them flip flop, man. Like, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure dope. that in terms of actual hardware, the Genesis had a more advanced color or was more capable of a more advanced color palette. That doesn't mean that the the developers utilized them in the best way. But I believe that the console itself was a more capable console. Yeah. They just didn't have the support and like the push that I think Nintendo did. Nintendo was so much bigger than Genesis or Sega at that point. So I don't know. The other thing to consider too, when I lean more towards Nintendo versus or Sega, I guess Super Nintendo versus Sega Genesis is the IP. Nintendo had crazy IP. Like you're talking about Mario, you're talking about Yoshi games, you're talking about Legend of Zelda, like that. Those okay. games, you're going to have a really hard time finding any IP on the Sega side that can compete in terms of popularity. All right, but if if Nintendo had a better color or more options for a color palette, why is it that there's a bunch of games out there that, without a doubt, look better on Sega than Nintendo? And they're the same game. Why is that? Like the games I mentioned, uh, such as Moonwalker, Yeez, Mickey Mania, Pretty much the Lion King, Aladdin, all pretty a lot of the Disney games just flat out looked better on Sega. And I don't understand why if Super Nintendo had such good color or more color options. You know what I'm saying? See, somebody somebody in the chat has to fact check this because now now I'm second guessing myself which one actually had the more advanced color palette. I th- uh, I'm, I've seen a lot of people in the chat say Super Nintendo had more colors or better colors or stuff like that. But ah, for some reason, I thought it was the other way right. around. But I mean, it could be wrong. After the show, I'm going to text you a list of games and I want you to pull them up, you know, and compare them side by side and, and tell me if you agree with me or not. Oh, uh, so uh, it, it, you're also talking about preference here, too, P Dubs. You got to factor that in because no, no, I can no, walk- no, this is Team Sega, Michael B. You know, you're supposed <laughs> to be helping me. You're supposed to be helping me, Michael B. I, I, I'm Team Video Game. How about that? So, 
So if you take Ease 3, Wanderers of Ease, the Super Nintendo version and the Sega version, they both are on the systems, but they're also made by different developers. Like one, uh, I forget who actually made the Sega Genesis version. Um, so, I mean, a lot of it's how they're done, how they work with the technology. And there's cheats here too that we're not talking about because the system was only so powerful, but then depending on how much RAM the game actually had and what was inside the game, they could actually cheat the system to make it look a little bit better. So those are the things we got to consider as well too. Mm, okay. Well, mm -hmm. I'm seeing well, a lot of people make better thing for sure that the Super Nintendo had more color. Maybe I'm getting it backwards, and that's entirely possible. But uh, I, I mean, for sure, the Genesis was a more powerful console, um, but it was marginally more powerful. But no, I'm not saying I'm biased. I'm not trying to be a biased host or not. I'm just saying I'm more likely to share comments on in the chat that are pro Sega than pro <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> Your Sega ride or die. So. <laughs> <laughs> I reminded of like um god what is it that Austin Powers where the guys like there's only two things I uh, I don't like people who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the dutch and the dutch <laughs> so like there's only two things I don't like people who are intolerant of you know various console systems and the super nintendo <laughs> there we go if you want to put up smack x's comment i think it's up there it's like the third or fourth all right let's see wait hold on it's going up there all right so it looks like he, he wikipedia this i'm guessing maybe maybe he or and she I'm, actually and I'm, and I'm sharing this comment because it covers half your face so that's yes, the only reason thanks. why i'm sharing it you're, you're only mad that uh <laughs> you're only mad that i've got the opinions i do <laughs> all right let's go let's go read it read it off for us uh, what's that say all right, so the uh, Mega Drive slash Genesis used a 9-bit RGB palette, 512 colors, 1536, including shadow and highlight mode. Uh, the Super NES has a 15-bit RGB, which is 32,768 color palette um, with up to 256 simultaneous colors. So if that is true, assuming it is, then definitely Super Nintendo had a much more advanced color palette. So then I'm wrong, and I will definitely say that. I'm getting confused or whatever, but... Um, Super Nintendo definitely has a better color palette. The Genesis CPU was marginally better and clocked in at a faster speed. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I'm still, I'm still Super Nintendo. I'm still Super Nintendo well, because of a lot of apples. Well, that's okay, man. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, no, nobody, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> you know, it's okay. Like, don't worry, nostalgia. You can still wake up tomorrow and smile, and you know, I'm gonna have a really hard time knowing that you're disappointed in me, though. I am. So. <laughs> I am. Like, he texted me before the show, and he's like, "I'm gonna wear a Nintendo shirt on the Sega show," and I was like, "Why? It's a Sega show." What? Well, listen, you yeah. got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Oh, and the Rexer shows here. Make sure you guys subscribe to the Rexer show. Uh, Super Nintendo is PG rated, while Sega was R rated. Yeah, that's kind of what we've all been talking about throughout this stream, um, especially when it came to games like Mortal Kombat and stuff like that. Right? <coughs> Super Nintendo, they didn't even have the blood code, did they? Or do they have the blood? Uh, they they had a they had a code, but uh -huh. no, it was no, it was, no, it was not blood. the same. Yeah, it was not the same. Now there's a comment here on my chat here. Uh, uh, C. Met Higgins. He was say, he says he was a blockbuster manager back in those days of the console wars. He said Nintendo definitely overpowered others in the rental market. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. man, I remember. I don't know what you guys had for rental. Well, do you know what? Do you know why people rented them? Because they weren't worth buying. They're like, no, I'm just gonna no, 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 no. Hold on. I'm gonna play what it. What are you? And I'm just gonna about? give it back. Like, why should I spend fifty bucks to to buy it? When I can spend five bucks, rent it for three days, return it to some creep at Blockbuster. Ah, you know I mean? you're wrong. That's okay, though. <laughs> That's okay. I, what did you guys have in the States? I don't know what you guys had over there. Up in Canada, we had, I don't know what you had, Mike, because maybe it was different in a, in a different province than where I am, but we had like Rogers Video and we had Dumbo Video, which was a weird name. And I didn't go there Dumbo. that often, but Jumbo, uh, not Dumbo. Jumbo, thank you. Yes, yeah. Jumbo video, Dumbo video, whatever. We'll call it. We'll call it Dumbo. And <laughs> no, um, no, they'll get sued. Give it up. <laughs> they're, they're long bankrupt now. They can't sue me. It's all good. Yeah. So, um, no, but the big <laughs> one was Rogers, and I remember going every single weekend as a kid and renting the soup. I had the choice. I could pick Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, and the Sega Genesis sat on the shelf collecting dust because oh, right, nobody right, right, wanted right. it. And everyone was fighting for the Super Nintendo. Console. Wait, wait, wait. Were, were you one of the people that did that? Did you pick the Super Nintendo over the Sega? 
until my dad got tired of renting it and finally said, well, I'm going to spend 25 bucks every weekend. I may as well just buy the darn thing. Well, then there's all more reason to continue to do this. So guys, let's get real. <laughs> let's get real. Let's talk about what's important. And what's important is talking about how awesome Sega is compared to Nintendo. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let, let's let's try this again you what know? is this censorship censorship of steven, speech here what's steven, going on steven sega or nintendo nintendo <laughs> which one what do you what, what's my choice one? nintendo every yeah <laughs> goodbye okay so like i was saying guys sega all the way you know we don't need nostalgia on his twenty thousand followers do we i mean he gone he gone. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Hopefully we entertained you guys. Hopefully that was funny. So um, Steven knows I love him. I, and, and, you know, you love people who, you know, you, you, it's kind of like Florence Nightingale. I see a wounded bird, a, a, a Nintendo fan. <laughs> and it's like the Florence Nightingale syndrome. Like, I just want to help Rostalgia see the error of his ways and get on Team Sega. Oh, man, you know? I don't know. You ask anybody under the age of 20, they don't even know what a Sega is. So... That but you're over 20. You know volume. what a Sega is. Come oh, on. I'm you're... in like that me medium age where I actually knew gaming. I understand it. I was born into it. You're like 52. Carl, help me out here. <laughs> 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 anyway, guys. So what else uh, should we talk about here about Sega and Nintendo? Um, Carl, what was your favorite uh, sports game? Did you play? Was it the Blitz on the Dreamcast? Is that what you said? Or no, was the, the 2K uh, NFL 2K. NFL 2K. That's awesome. Yeah, and yeah. back on uh, Nintendo and Sega, I used to. I, I liked uh, Road Rash. Do you guys remember that game? Oh, Road, Road Rash. Yeah. yeah. Road, Road Rash, Rash was, was cool. Yeah, that was that was a pretty cool game. I, I, I think cool. I tried to. Is that on? Is that on the mini? Road Rash Two is. Is it? Is it? Yeah, Road Rash Two is on the Sega Genesis mini. But I think that's the one that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Sega. Sega, Sega Sega definitely had a better relationship with EA, especially early. So that's why you saw the Road Rash titles come out on the Genesis, like all the sports titles. They're optimized for the Genesis. What else? Do you remember the helicopter games like Desert Strike and all those? Those oh. were EA titles that were all on the Genesis too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Desert Strike. Okay. A let's big one on the Genesis, I've got to give credit where it's due, is uh, Castlevania Bloodlines. Anyone oh, who's played yeah. that game, that is a masterpiece. It is so, yeah. like, that Castlevania game. Is so much better than any of the Castlevania games on Super Nintendo. They did Whoa. that game. So, um, Whoa. Hold on, Mike. You know, you know, you got to give credit. That is probably the best 16-bit Castlevania game that's been released. But that's a bold statement because you're talking about <laughs> Super Castlevania 4, which is incredible. You're that's talking about I'm Rondo saying, of Blood. Hold on. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying yeah. that Bloodlines is the best. They're oh, all I, good. I, that's a, that's a bold just, statement, man. That's a bold I statement. It, First, I'm fighting with P-Dubs. Now, Michael B wants yeah, to go at it. With me. It's Michael, round two. Michael B. Michael B stands for bold from now on, guys. <laughs> like, Michael is such a polite guy. Like, he's not going to say, like, you're an idiot. I disagree with you. Thinking, that is though. a bold statement. That's, right. That's, that's almost worth going to your province for. I just want you to know that that is a bold <laughs> statement, Rostalgia. How, you know, with your with your Nintendo crap. That's bold. <laughs> so bold of you. Seriously, guys, um, nothing beats Robocop versus the Terminator. Come on, man. That was a great yeah. game. Oh, man, I, never even, I never even played that game. I don't even yeah, know what Robocop no, is. Well, then why no... do we even have you here? I mean, if he's never even played the game, why do we even yeah. have him here? Th <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> I think that's, every uh, week I'm going to kick Rostelja off the show. Every week it's going to be awesome. Oh man! So. <laughs> yeah, Robocop versus Terminator is one of the games that there's no debate. The Genesis <laughs> version is so much better. Like it's night and day. Yeah. Completely different game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. What else? What else? What else? What other? I'm trying to rack some games in my brain now. I did like. All right. Did, what, what about Sonic though? What was your favorite Sonic game on all? And it could be on any of the platforms. Like I'll go OG. I loved. Sonic 2, I loved playing as Sonic and uh, as Tails. Like, once they started adding Knuckles and stuff, I mean, that was kind of cool, but like, I I, I, I just like that pair. I just, It was like Mario and Luigi, Sonic and Tails. You know okay, I mean? so I'm going to get blasted that. again for this one. Okay, brace yourselves. All right. Sonic 3D Blast. I had that on PC. I don't know why. I freaking love that game. 
I love that game. I know it's trash. I will be the first to say it's a trash game, but I love that game. Yeah, and that's it, more, that's probably more of because you had the game and couldn't afford the Genesis. So. Oh, whatever, dude. You, it's because you know. it's because my parents no, knew better. No, no, right. <laughs> You guys had that issue with the whole Genesis thing, so you stayed away and you got had the PC, so you know. Again, you know, that is a bold statement, nostalgia. Right. That's Sonic Spinball was the best. Sonic Spinball was great. I don't oh, care what anybody yeah. says. I love that game. Yeah. Yeah. We what got what game was that? Sonic, Sonic Spinball. Spinball. Sonic Mania. I'll, I'll what about the mean it. hey, what about the mean bean machine? That just brought some memories back. You didn't like it? That's nah. okay, Michael. I forgive you. I'm not going to kick you off the show. Uh, <laughs> dumpster fire. Man, I love it when people use emojis. <laughs> I don't know which one Destro is referring to, but something was a, was a dumpster fire. Uh, so, uh, just watch the Sonic movie really bad. So I, I disagree watched, with that. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed it. I actually yeah. thought Jim Carrey made a little bit of a comeback. In I movie. agree with Jordan. I didn't think it was terrible. I just had high expectations, especially considering they were doing so many changes to the aesthetics. <laughs> I was like, okay, they're going to fix it up. Maybe they're going to make a good movie out of this. And of course, um, it was mediocre at best. I think yeah. they are doing a sequel, though. So, I mean, that's been that's a thing. So, so wait, can wait, I ask you? Can I mm-hmm. ask you a question? <laughs> you can go ahead, Pete. Ups. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> no you didn't. Wait, you won't even on. touch this. I think it was a bold statement that he just made about the uh, <laughs> Sonic movie not being so good. All right, listen. I didn't. It wasn't a terrible movie, but it was very kid centered. I mean, it's it supposed to be getting a very young generation interested in Sonic yeah. again. So, so we <laughs> we always for, we always forget this. Like when when they make this stuff now. Are, are, are they going to make a movie called Sonic the Hedgehog for 40-year-old men? I yeah, mean, come that's on. what they need to do. That, <laughs> that's who was watching that movie. That's who was watching. It was people like us that are like, yeah, Sonic. And then we go to the movies and we're like, no, Sonic. Who do you so, think was lying about the what, way he looked? It wasn't the kids. What would, what would a 40-year-old, 40-year-old Sonic movie be about? <laughs> so maybe it's the 40-year-old virgin hot hedgehog. Maybe. How about that? It could be. I'm just saying. The All right. Wait, 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 wait. For Hold gamers on. like us. <laughs> This takes the cake. If we have a guy whose YouTube handle is NES Attic, and if he writes, it's as good as it could have been, that's probably the comment of the day. Eh, it's as good that's, as it could have that's been. That's a fair way to put it. It All wasn't right. it wasn't Let's, amazing. All right. Let's but it was just acceptable. It, the Sonic movie was way better than that Super Mario Brothers movie starring Bob Hoskins that came out what 15 years ago? The guy from Roger Rabbit. Do you remember that movie? Hold on, that's that's yeah. okay, but that was a long time ago. Like Nintendo's starting to look at potential live action films and licensing out to make animated series. I you got guys, do you want to see a Super Mario Brothers movie like today? Do you guys want okay. that? Okay, listen, we are going off topic here now. We could do a whole show on video game movies, talk about Double Dragon, all the terrible all right. ones, but that's a different show. <laughs> that's episode right. two. That's episode yeah. two. I think we should talk about all the different video game movies and who did it right, who did it wrong, what could be improved. They I all did it wrong. Everyone. <laughs> Actually, Spoiler. I, would, I would disagree with you. And next week, this might happen to Michael B. Next week. Oh, oh there he's, he's back. Whoa, 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 where'd he go? Wait, oh. now he's back. How'd you get over there? <laughs> How's it feel, That's Mike? A bold thing to do, P dubs. Bold. Now, now you're <laughs> under there. Now you're under there. It has begun. I love it. I love it. All right. Guys, we've gone over an hour. We've gone off the rails. Um, and I appreciate you guys being engaged in the chat and spending some time with us. Next week, I think we've already picked our topic. We're gonna talk about all the video game movies. We're gonna play clips. We'll have the trailers. We'll put a lot of effort into giving you guys some great content for episode two. And we'll talk about um, video game movies. Who did it right? Who did it wrong? Oh, I'm going to have fun with this one. I haven't haven't seen half those movies, but I'm going to troll the snot out of you guys. This is going to be good. It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) Um, You know, I mean, we'll get you some medication and you'll be fine. Um, Bring it on, man. (laughs) Do us a favor, though, guys. Hopefully, let us know after the show. Leave comments. Give us thumbs up. Uh, Make sure you comment wherever you watch the video, whatever channel. Remember, we're broadcasting on four channels at once. And let us know what you think of the show. What would you like to see? What are some good show ideas? All that kind of stuff. We want to make sure that this show is engaging and fun for all of you and all that kind of stuff. So don't forget to do that. And also, do us a favor. There's links to all of our channels in the video description below. Please subscribe to everybody. 
because we all do arcade and gaming content. And I think you'll, if you like this show, you'll like all of our channels individually as well. Um, so that's my final farewell. And if we want to just go around the horn and then uh, we'll kick it off. Carl, any final thoughts or anything about Sega or Sega? Uh, I mean, again, I like, I like them both. I've spent a lot of time with both of them. Uh, me and my neighbor back and forth. Hours and hours at a time. I, I, I definitely going to look at the uh, resale market and get me one of those uh, Dreamcasts because I think I, I would still enjoy that. Um, Rostaja might be able to send it to me. I know he knows a guy that could ship it to me. Six um, grand. His right. rates are going up next week, so you better make it quick, man. <laughs> uh, but I, I love it. The, I'm going to talk about the mini. That sucks. There's no good games on it. <laughs> Don't waste it. If anybody wants to buy one at half price, I got one for you. <laughs> Okay, uh, I hope they put better games on that other one when they start announcing those games. Because uh, those things. <laughs> um, anybody got a Nintendo that one sell it to me? I'll buy that. <laughs> Go ahead, Ristalgia. Uh I don't. I don't have a whole lot to say. I will say. Okay, I did. I did kind of do a little bit more Nintendo siding on this one. I do love Sega, so don't think I don't. Um, uh, Carl, you're wrong about the Sega Genesis Mini. I mean, it's okay. Sometimes, sometimes you're just you're wrong about stuff. Okay. Um, but if you actually do want a Super Nintendo or an NES Classic, I did mention this in in an earlier video uh, on the Nintendo of America store. Um, both Canada and the U.S. they're selling refurbished units. So if you guys actually want to pick one up, they're really really good prices. I think the NES is like forty nine ninety nine, and the SNES is sixty nine ninety nine which beats the snot out of anything you're going to buy in the secondary market. So um, <laughs> definitely, if you guys actually want to grab one of those, it's not a bad idea to hop on over to Nintendo.com and, and to pick one up. Of those two, which one you prefer the best? Me personally, I yeah. lean on the Super Nintendo side. Um, I just, I grew up with it. I like those games. Um, that being said, the NES Classic is a fantastic console. Like there's so many great titles on that. I'm, I'm leaning Super Nintendo though. And one last question for you. Uh, if you're going to sell me again on this Sega Genesis Mini, mm -hmm. what, what game should I turn it on tonight and play? Oh, I would I would say maybe Castlevania is a good one. Yeah. Um, let me good. think for a second. Shinobi 3. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, if you it depends on the style of game that you want to play. If you want to play like a fun platformer, Kid Chameleon is pretty good. Um, I did try that one. So that, that one, I think I think that was the best of, of what I've played so far. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's a Fantasy Star game on there, if you're into that style of game. Uh, th those are games that you could pick up. I mean, it, it just depends on the style of game that you want to play. If you want to play like a, a side-scroller, if you want to play a beat-em-up. I want to play Joe Montana is what I want to play. <laughs> Joe Montana is not <laughs> It's not going to happen. <laughs> or actually, hold on. Wait. If you buy one, or you have one, just mod it. Yeah, mod it. And that's what I bought it for, to mod it. I hadn't had time to, just, to see. Just what subscribe I mean. to Rostalgia. He's got a ton of awesome videos on how to mod <laughs> your Sega Genesis Mini. I'll and do you that. Pretty much, you can throw on Super <laughs> Nintendo. You can throw on Nintendo Turbo. Whatever you want. We got it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So this was supposed to be like a farewell. That's like the longest farewell in history. <laughs> All right. Michael well, because Michael B. didn't raise his hand. If he would have raised yeah. his hand, we would have cut it off right there. Yeah. Okay, right. there we go. Uh, go ahead, Michael. I, I wish more people loved the Sega CD like I did. Go out and play <laughs> Sewer Shark. That's all I got to say. Yeah. And before yeah. we uh, and uh, any any other final thoughts, Michael, or is that it? Nope. Buy a Sega CD. Play Sega <laughs> buy, CD. Buy Sega CD. Um, all right, guys, do me Ooh. a favor. Make sure you subscribe to everybody. I'm going to kick it over to Carl for his legendary farewell. Um, and we will be back next week. And the show will be. Um, Video game movies. What are good? Which one's got it right? Which one's got it wrong? And it'll be a very entertaining show. We're, we're going to put a lot of effort into it. Remember, guys, we can only get better from here. Like, you know, it's only going to get better from here, right? <laughs> yeah, if you guys want this to turn into like a six-hour live stream every week, we can do that. Just just let us know in the comments. That's what P-Dubs originally wanted, and I said, nah, six hours is pushing it. I think yeah. we should start with one hour, and then we'll gradually increase based off of demand. But you All can right. let us know six hours, twelve hours. I yeah. mean, Pete was talking about a twenty-four hour marathon. It I could seemed, do it. I think I could. I think seemed, I could. It seemed like a little much, but I, th I think I could. All I need is a Sega and cocaine, and I'll be all right. <laughs> um, all right, guys, um, we're going to be getting out of here. Thanks so much, Carl. Hey guys, thanks for watching today. We appreciate all the comments and and the time you took to 
uh, share with us. Until next time, guys, we'll see you on the web.